<laughs> Maria is an international speaker, healer, and the author of the best-selling book, Live Your Happy. A Cuban-American born in Miami. Oh my gosh, she's 5'9", with a towering personality to match. That's so funny how it has your your vitals there. <laughs> 155 pounds. No. <laughs> Just kidding. That's what I weigh, and I'm 5'9". Um, after experiencing success as a model and actress, including hosting World Wrestling Federation TV shows, she felt called inward and studied to become a reverend at the Pathways of Light, an accredited school inspired by A Course in Miracles. She brings her unique, truthful, helpful, and happy message to non-denominational churches and venues across the USA and beyond. She also leads life-changing workshop on happiness and self-love. Maria lives with her husband, Christian, and her son, Ari, in Naples, Florida. Welcome, Maria. Thank you so much, Judy, and uh, thank you, everyone. How, how is everyone? Hey. Wonderful. Judy, and I just wanted to acknowledge you of what an amazing job you did today. You're such a, a beautiful speaker. And um, thank you also for reading from my book. And I know today you had some technical difficulties, but you handled them with such grace. And yes, God is in charge. I'm into that. God is in charge. Um, so I could see you all there. And I am very excited, very moved by the topic today, which is having big willingness. And today, I'm sure you're wondering, what does that even mean? Right? Big willingness. And, and for me, it's really this whole this statement is, is the key to everything. It's really the key to unlock um, a deep reason why we suffer is not applying being uncompromising or making exceptions in our life. But I was really guided. It's interesting because she was reading from my book, Live Your Happy. And I was also guided to read a part of it just to open up because I feel something will move through as I read this. And let's see where this takes us. <clears throat> but there's a part in my book where I write, how do we lose touch with love? And this is very important because A Course in Miracles says the world began when the son of God forgot to laugh. And it was basically this erroneous thought of we can do it better than God. And it kind of makes sense because in this world, we're always trying to do it better than God, right? Want to manipulate, control, um, have it be our way. So here it goes. It says here. In the beginning, there was perfect happiness. Sometimes this state is referred to metaphorically as the Garden of Eden. But it's really a state of mind that's pure bliss ecstasy there's no judgments there's no sadness anger or sickness existed only love then arose a very silly thought is there something else that was the beginning of doubt and as the course suggests no one has been sure of anything since doesn't it feel a little bit like that <laughs> then it goes on to say Exactly when did, when did this mistaken thought occur? The answer is just a moment ago. It's happened countless times before, but the only time that counts is the most recent one because the only time that matters is now. We're constantly thinking that we're separate from God, removing ourselves from the love that is our true nature. That's why we remain in such a painful world. So how long is really besides the point? That would be the ego trying to figure this out, right? But what I'm trying to get at is with, with this topic of big willingness, there we need to begin to have this big willingness and begin to become uncompromising within our spiritual practice. That could be the unity teachings, that could be the Course of Miracles, that could be Buddhism, whatever spiritual practice each individual has. But there has to be this commitment to having this big willingness to want to put it in action, um, to want to bring it into our lives. And I feel that what holds us back and the state that I just talked about of when we forget who we are, and we want to do it better than God, is that we fall asleep to the love of God. And then we believe that this world is real. 
And then hence we believe we're separate and we play out this, this puppeteer, this separation. But what the big willingness is, is you being uncompromising and saying, I want to show up now in my life and I want to look at things differently. I want to forgive even if I don't want to. And I also want to listen to the Holy Spirit more. And I want to follow guidance. The thing is, my friends, and you can tell me if you feel this way, because I feel this way. And this is something that just comes very honest from my heart, which is one of the reasons that we don't have this big willingness or we become uncompromising or don't want to forgive is because we are, in a sense, unconsciously terrified and scared of this big love. Can we all relate to that? Being, being scared to the vastness of this love. And I've seen it time and time again in my relationships and in my life that I was I didn't understand why I was so scared. I didn't understand why I was looking for my love outside of myself and relationships and money and success and external things and things happening my way. I didn't understand. It's like I was I was lost. I was lost in a dream and a nightmare. But what I came to realize as I started to wake up is that it was actually my doing. It was my responsibility. The world wasn't doing it to me. It was it was I was doing it to me. I wasn't willing to forgive. I was willing to say I would forgive, but not really. <laughs> right? I want to forgive, but not really. And that is the little trick. That is, I would say, the silver lining. It's like the space between the words. It's it's that's it right there. When when we say something when we want to manifest something, when we want to live something out, but there's this withholding energy there. You say you want to do it, but within you still want to hold that grudge or you still want to be right or you still want to control. But at the same time, saying out loud or acting out loud or or behaving that you want to change so i want to change and i am abundance you know the, um, one of the most beautiful things about the unity teachings is affirmations is the i am is connecting to the divine and to connect to the divine will of love right hence in the course of miracles terminology is connect to the divine love of the holy spirit so we have these choices to connect to the divine love or the or divine Holy Spirit, connect to that will, the will of the Holy Spirit, the, the will of the divine love. Although we have that choice and we want to make the choice of the divine love and Holy Spirit, but there's an internal sabotage that we're not aware of. That is That's very important. And this looks like this. It looks like this. I want, I, I am love, right? For me, it's I am love. I am peace. The Course in Miracles says, I am the light of the world. I am as God created me. That's that's what I know intellectually. That's what I feel when I meditate. But then I go out in the world and I believe that love is outside of myself. Or I am healthy. I am I am divinely healthy. And then I get to the doctor's office and the doctor's office tells you something's wrong and you believe it and you go into fear, you said, and you say, oh my God, and this is so real and I am a body and I'm going to die, right? So we, we need to begin to be very aware to be practicing everything in our daily lives from when we go to the grocery store, to the doctor's office, to family reunions, to when you're writing an email, when you're writing a text, when you're going through a door, it's just like this conscious awareness of I have this big willingness to live these principles of unity, to leave, live these principles of A Course in Miracles or, or whatever spiritual practice you are um, tuned into that inspires you. You're, you will go and be uncompromising and say, I, I am willing to live this out. I am willing to let go of this fear of feeling the love of my father because the underlining fear is that we feel we're separate. 
we feel guilty because we feel we separated from our father. So that's why the course says, I'm never upset for the reason I think. So every single moment, going back to the first, uh, to what I just read at the beginning, when it says, when did the separation occur? And it's just saying, well, just a moment ago, and then now, and then now, and then now, is because that is when the separation is occurring, my friends. So the separation of God is occurring every time in the present moment that you're choosing to believe in the illusion. And then every moment you come back to having um, that connection with God and choosing the Holy Spirit, you're back in heaven. You're back in the mind of God. It's not somewhere you go to later. It's, it's something you experience now in the present moment. So that's the good news. Because God is such a loving father that has given us that free will, right? So look, the unity talks about, and I know the theme of the month is will. That's what unity says. It's we have will. We have these faculties of where we're able to discern, of where we're able to make decisions, right? So what unity is teaching us is, is that it's important to let go of our will, our will as humans, as, be, as you know, um, personalities, and come into the will of God, to come into the will of the divine. And the Course in Miracles is also saying, let's choose the will of the Holy Spirit. So what we do is, is that every given moment from when we wake up till we go to sleep, we get to choose that. We get to choose, do I want the will of God or do I want the will of the Holy Spirit, right? So then within that will of you having the will of being able to choose is you, you want to have that big willingness. The Course of Miracles says, all you need is a little bit of willingness and miracles happen. And when I was writing my book, I, I, I got this, this funny um, idea of, my God, I feel like I need big fat willingness because this world is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And you guys have heard me say this many, many times, right? It's like, I need this big willingness because I am lost in the illusion, right? So one of the three things that I wanted to go over real quickly is the power to choose love. So we have the power in every given moment to choose love, to choose the will of the Holy Spirit. And that's a decision we must make. And we need to be uncompromising with that. And we can't make exceptions to that if we want to continue to grow. So I always say, choose love. And what does that mean? Forgive, even if you don't want to forgive. So even if you are holding a grudge or you're like, I don't want to forgive this, it's this uncompromising nature of, I am willing to forgive this. I am willing to forgive this person, which forgiveness in ACIM terms is actually non-judgment. So it's really the release of judgment. So it's, I am willing to forgive this. I am willing to lift the veil of illusion in this. I am so willing, even if, even, even, even if I'm scared, because what the forgiveness and the non-judgment is going to take us is to this expanding love and this freedom from suffering that we're a little bit terrified of because we're addicted to the suffering. We're addicted to that separation where, where it's like unconscious to us that we get something out of it. But when we say, okay, I am willing to forgive this person. I'm willing to forgive this situation. I am willing to see this differently. And being uncompromising within it is very powerful because you're willing to do it anyways. And the love of God can be terrifying and, and really not being the victim anymore can also be terrifying. But it's like really the relinquishment of, I, I don't want to be a victim anymore. And I'm willing to see what that feels like. Okay, so how many of you that are here today, you're not victims. You don't play the victim, do you? No. <laughs> I can't hear you, but I'm assuming that you guys don't play the victim, right? How many of, okay, maybe I could, I could actually see your hands if you would erase them. So how many of you um, don't play the victim? Okay, don't play. How many of you do play the victim? 
<laughs> All right, good. So we have we have mixed reviews. Okay, so the whole point here is that ultimately all of us in one way or another have some sort of victimization because of the separation. For me, I realized, and this goes back to eons of time of when 1990s, when the Course in Miracles came into my life. And I've been on a spiritual path since I was like 15 with different philosophies and su such, especially early, early on starting with the unity principles, which I love. Um, but I, I, I realized that what held me back, and this is why I'm sharing this message today about big willingness, is what really held me back was the self-sabotage and not really being all in with the practice, still holding on to separation, still holding on to wanting to be right, and still somehow believing and thinking that I can find the love of my father somewhere outside of me. And constantly being in that story for eons and, and years, even studying the Course in Miracles and, and eventually being a teacher of God is, is, is this, this unconscious way of thinking that I'm not all in. You know, I'm not all in. I'm not 100% willing yet. So you want to see what that is for you. Because you can come to the service today and listen to listen to my, you know, my talking head all day long. You can listen to these sermons, you know, every every Sunday. You can read books, you can kumbaya left and right and cha cha cha. But I have to tell you <laughs> that eventually that it's, it won't get you anywhere if if you're not looking at that blind spot of where you aren't really committed to forgive. You are really ready to let go of that victimization and really pr a deep prayer of the heart to God of, I am willing to finally release this addiction. I am willing to do what I am saying and what my true self wants for me. So it's this big willingness, this, this super uncompromising, I'm not going to make any more exceptions, I can't say it enough, to my spiritual practice. I will forgive even if I don't want to. I will not be victimized even if I don't want to, even though my ego wants to hang on to that. I don't want to continue to be right. I want to not want to defend myself anymore. I don't want to continue to look for the love outside of myself. And ultimately, I want to recognize that I have everything and I lack nothing, period. The time has come. And, and, and this is a very serious thing in the sense of the way I'm talking about it, because it was something that was revealed to me in a very powerful way about 10 years ago of where finally I got the joke. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been self-sabotaging myself. I say that I am love, I am peace, and then I'm looking for my love and peace outside of myself. Or I am abundance and terrified about my bank account. There's no trust. There's so many things that you can pray about, that you can meditate about, that you have all this wishful thinking. Although until we bring it and become uncompromising and say, you know, I am going to wholeheartedly look at these grievances. I'm going to go wholeheartedly and look at all these blind spots. I'm going to look at all this judgment and choose again. And you don't do it alone. That's the beautiful part. You do it with divine love. As the unity says, the Holy Spirit with the teachings of Jesus and what a beautiful example he was to us. This is how we do it. We're, our hands are held and grace is upon us as we practice this. Grace is upon us. So through the practice of being uncompromising and making exceptions, it takes something because it takes work. It takes work to want to forgive someone. You know, it takes work to not want to be right, right? <laughs> that takes work because you were, we want to be right. So what we do is we take the Holy Spirit's hand very graciously and understand that we will fall down, that we will forget, that we will make something very, 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 very real. We will do that. But at the same time, we have the hand of the Holy Spirit that there's that's there waiting on the signs, sidelines so that we're ready to come back to our sanity because the Holy Spirit doesn't play with your sanity. It's just waiting in the corner, probably behind the palm tree or whatever tree you may have next to you, just waiting for you to remember who you are. 
oh, wow, okay. For me, it's Maria, Maria La Loca, right? Oh, look, there's Maria La Loca. She's losing her mind. When she's ready, I'll be sure I come into her mind because right now she's believing the egoic thoughts of the illusion. That's her free will. That's what a loving father we have, that our father knows that ultimately we've chosen heaven, that we know we're in the mind of love. There's really no choice at all between love and fear, only in the world of duality, not in the in our real world of the oneness of love, not even forgiveness is needed. So the Holy Spirit is just waiting for us on the sidelines, sidelines for us to come back to our sanity. And that's where the big willingness is. My gosh, I am so willing to not want to be right anymore. I'm so willing not to try to play God or try to replace God or to think I know it better than God. And that is love and that's humility. That's compassion. That is what love is. And that's what we're called to do. But we can't do that unless we're uncompromising. We can't do that unless we're not making exceptions anymore to God's love. We have to say, I am ready and I am ready. I am love and I am love, period. I am forgiveness and I am forgiving. Not I am love, but I'm going to look for love outside of myself. Or I am abundant. Oh, I am abundant. But I'm going to look for abundance outside of myself, right? So it's the synchronicity of, okay, I'm going to walk out of this, you know, out of this church today. And I'm going to, I'm going to live this stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to show up for myself. I'm going to show up for my family. I'm going to show up for God in a way that's so radical that I can't even comprehend it. And I don't need to comprehend it because the Holy Spirit will help me comprehend it. The Holy Spirit will show me the way. And I'll tell you now, you will forget. In my case, I will forget. I will be a hot mess every once in a while. I will become Maria La Loca every once in a while. And that's fine. I give myself permission to, because I, I believe I'm a body still. But within that belief, I understand there's something else. And I'm willing to discover that every single day, more and more and more and more and more. It's like ex ex Inspector Gadget, you know, looking for evidence. Every day, instead of the ego looking for evidence that I'm separate, every day I'm looking for evidence that I am not separate. I've never left the mind of God. And God is a very loving father. And I am there. We are all in the mind of God. Just having a temporary dream of a nightmare of a separation of illusion. So coming back into this uncompromising nature, you're so worthy of that. It's your divine right. You know, the Course of Miracles says God's will for you is perfect happiness. And also you were as God created you. So the only reason that we can come back to that is having this big willingness to say, I am ready. I am so ready to experience God's love. I am so willing not to feel victimized anymore. I'm so willing not to need to be right. I'm so willing to live my life without suffering. I'm so willing to look at all these beliefs and all this narrative and just know that they're not real. And every moment I get to choose that again and again and again. And in this moment right now again. So... When you're at the doctor's office, you'll never see that doctor's office the same again if you're being uncompromising and don't want to have judgment. When you go into you know, your next job um, interview or any upcoming event you might have or, or, or any family affair or anything that might be um, a very hard situation, you get to, you have the power. You have the power of will. How, what, Am I going to choose divine will? Am I going to choose the will of the Holy Spirit in this in this situation, in this relationship? Am I going to be super uncompromising right now and not go into the fear and not believe in the, in the separation and not believe in the egoic thoughts? Am I going to be uncompromising right now? Yes, I'm going to be uncompromising because the other way I've recognized doesn't work. But it's a slow process with grace, with love, with compassion. And then you get to show up in your life in every situation and say, wow, it's, it's my dominion as a child of God and having such a loving father, mother, God. It's my divine right that I get to show up in my life and I get to experience it through the eyes of love and be free from the suffering. But the Holy Spirit saying, OK, let's do the work here. You're all in. You got to come all in into my arms 
Spirit saying, come all in. I'm here. Come all in. I, I'll hold you. I felt so held by the Holy Spirit throughout my years in my relationship, my epic relationship that I say with Holy Spirit. I'm so in. Is it super hard sometimes? Absolutely. I want to be right, especially make my husband wrong. That's, you know, I, that's, that's, you know, that's something I really, I, you know, it's just very natural to me, you know, but I'm so, 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 so willing to not go there. I'm so willing to understand that my problem is not outside. He's not my problem. My young son is not my problem. You know, even like Judy and today with the thing, you know, the problem is not the Zoom's not working and this is not working. Like these situations outside, the problem is not there. The problem is in within our mind. How are we going to perceive it? Are we going to choose the will of the divine? Or are we going to choose the will of the cuckoo voice, of the egoic voice? It's our choice. And she ultimately made that choice. And look at where we are today. We're live. Woo! Amen. We are live. We heard the songs. I mean, come on. <laughs> so that is how we do. So I'll, I'll end with this. We can, we're going to have situations in our lives. They're going to come up just like this morning, uh, this certain situation showed up and there are going to be many situations that are going to show up. So if I can leave you with anything is we have a choice. We have the will of the ego, we have the will of the Holy Spirit. We have the will of love or we have the will of fear. So you can go down two ways. You can go through it kicking and, and screaming because it's going to happen anyways, or you can go through it through grace. That is your choice. And what's going to give you either of those um, options and decisions, it's going to come, the one that you choose is going to come from that big willingness. Because if you really have big willingness, you're not going to go kicking and screaming. Because you know that you're you're not a child anymore. You've grown up. You're an adult. You're going to recognize, okay, I don't want to behave this way anymore. Because regardless of what is happening, it's going to happen. It is happening. It appears in the moment. So you can go down like a little child kicking and screaming or like a child of God and say, okay, this is going to happen. Either way, it's, it is happening. So I can experience it in a way that's free, in a way that's more aligned to God. So... Capito? Capisci? How was it? Good? All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Um, thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for this moment. For this space and time of where we get to remember you. of where we get to join in your will. And excited because we've chosen and made the decision now for this big willingness to be uncompromising, to not make exceptions to your love and to let go of the fear and anything that might be in the way of you fully coming into our hearts. So at this time, we just open up our hearts, our mind, energetically to Holy Spirit and really allow Holy Spirit to take our hand and to show us this big willingness, to show us the way to help us to have that strength to decide for love and to be uncompromising. So at this time, we're just very honest and we say, I need help. I want, I want, I want your help. That's being, that's humility. You know, it's like compassion. I, I, I want your help, Holy Spirit. I desire your help. I am willing. So I allow you in my mind now. So I pray for God's will now. We I pray for the will of God to be received in a very radical way and open to experiencing God's love in a way that is can't even be expressed in words. We're open, we are willing, we are ready. We are open all together. We are willing. We are ready. We are open. We are willing. We are ready. We are open. We are willing. We are ready. The time has come. 
I'm so, I'm so open. I'm so willing. I'm so ready. Just taking those words into your heart, not, not even saying anything, just feel that the vibrational fre frequency of that. All right, good. All together, you may open your eyes. Amen. Thank you, everyone.